our sixth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. I'm Alex, this is the Ramble, and we go until midnight tonight on the East Coast of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Steve Kravitz. Hey, hey, hey how are you? Hey, Kravitz. Last time we were talking, we were talking about uh, our union and medical care and things like that and how much we get and don't get and so on. And I was just wondering, you're on Medicare now, right? Well, you've probably been on Medicaid for years, right? I'm, I'm on Medicare, and I just got Mass Health. Oh, oh, oh that's supposed, that was the, the one that Obamacare was based on. Right, right, right. Yeah. So you're, you're pretty well covered. I am pretty well covered right now. Yes, I am. Yeah. How old are you now? 24. 24. I knew you when you were 24, I think. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you sure did. No, I'm six. I'm 64. You're 64, so you haven't hit 65 yet. No, not until March. So you don't have Medicare yet? So you what, have Mass Health? No, I have Medicare because I have a disability Medicare. Oh, okay. Because I'm insane. Well, well, what's the disability? You're an out-of-work actor? No, I'm uh, bipolar. Bipolar? That means yeah. you go both to the North Pole and the South Pole. Only on Christmas. Well, <laughs> you know, people always talk about these things like bipolar. I mean, I may have been all these things over the years and not known it, you know. Well, I first thought I was entitled to be moody because I was an artist. <laughs> well, that's, that's a good, good thinking on your part. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, and then I self-medicated for many years. Yeah, yeah. That, that was uh, the, your own medical program. Your own that, medical program. Yes, test. it was, and it, and it worked well for many years. Yeah. Now, 15 years and four months clean and sober. How many? 15 years. Really? Yeah. Did you ever say, things didn't get better in my life, maybe I should go back, or, you know... It's like, Silly. I'll tell you a story. I went to a, a doctor once, a urologist. And he says, well, we have to do a cystoscopy on you, which is sticking this tube up your penis, right? Aye, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. I know, it's Surely. the one thing that when you mention it, guys go, and, yeah. and, and when you, it happens to you, you go, Ugh. anyway, <laughs> anyway, I said, well, I don't think I need one, do I, really? He says, well, I will see here that you um, smoked for... 20 years. Right. And that's 20, that's 40 pack years at two packs a day. Sure. That could cause bladder cancer. Oh, and I looked really? at him and I said, but I quit 25 years ago. Right. And he said, well, but you could still have it. I said, then you mean I quit for nothing? <laughs> and he gave me this look like I was from outer space. I just went, I should have never quit. Well, check this out. I contracted hepatitis C in 1987. Mm -hmm. I have never had a flare-up. Never. Mm -hmm. They did blood work on me and my uh, internist. Mm -hmm. My uh, hepatitis is flaring up now. Now? So I to go, uh, yeah, I have to go for blood tests. I have to go for an ultrasound to see what's going on. But now... They can cure it. Depending on the strand, they can cure it between 8 and 12 weeks. Yeah, yeah. I, I had a woman I knew who came down with hepatitis C, and it literally, it informed her whole life. I mean, she had to be careful. People couldn't share razors with her. You know, right. if a guy came over and he wanted to shave and use a razor, he couldn't use it because the blade and, and, and all the things she couldn't do, you know. Right. And she gave me the whole litany when I was with her, and she said, well, if we're going to have sex again, here's what you should know, blah, 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 blah. You can't get it from just the sex, blah, but it's exchange of blood and so on and so on. Right, anyway, right, right. Anyway, um, uh, it, it, it was, uh, but where, where was I going with this? I forgot where I was going because I went off the road here. 
Well, I started with quitting smoking and yeah. bladder cancer. Then it went to my hepatitis C. Oh, yeah, acting yeah, up. yeah. So anyway, oh, yeah. So she she was miserable. She couldn't, you know, her life was being literally informed by the hepatitis C. And she had some right. effects from it and so on. And then one day, I, I didn't talk, haven't talked to her since, but they came up with the thing you said you'd be taking. Right. And it, it they cure hepatitis C now. It's just, right. it's not even, it's not even, you go in, they go, hey, you got hepatitis C here. Here's a prescription. Right, right, right. Well, first they have to determine what kind of hepatitis C you have. Yeah, yeah. Apparently there's multiple strains. Yeah. So, but they're all curable. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of things are curable. Do you know what they have almost cure, wiped out entirely? What's that? I heard this on the news yesterday. In fact, I heard it from Mario Cuomo. We included it in one of his speeches. AIDS. Yes. It's, it's within this much of being totally eradicated. Right. Right. So, and and do you remember AIDS when it hit in San Francisco and what? It was I, it was a death sentence. Yeah, it was an absolute death sentence. And now I lost I lost a couple of friends to AIDS. Yeah. Well, they have these drugs now. They advertise them on TV where if you've got AIDS, it lowers, it lowers your viral load low enough so you don't have detectable a, a, HIV, which means you can go out and have sex. If you don't have detectable yeah. HIV, it can't be spread. That's what they said. That's what, That's the ad what they say. say. That's what the ad says. Well, it depends on what kind of sex you're having. Yeah, well... <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I'll tell you, uh, uh, the the heterosexuals uh, did get AIDS. Oh yeah, from heterosexual sex, but it 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 was not as easy to get as if you were gay because it had to be an exchange of blood product. Right. And right. with gays, you've got anal sex, you've got the bursting of blood vessels in the anus, and then sperm, right. which is a blood product. That's right. Okay. Which is a blood product, and uh, so they had to kind of uh, do away with that. They had to, you know, as a blood. I just got lightheaded here. Uh, a blood product. Um, you had to not do the exchange of blood products. So, with heterosexual sex, that's not as possible. Right. It right, is right, possible, right. but she's got to have some kind of sore or some kind of lesion. And then you've got your sperm, and then boom, she gets right. it. Right. Or, there you go. but you getting it from her, unless you've got a sore on your penis, you're probably not going to get it. So. I'm still waiting to get a penis. You, I'm still, I'm, I'm, I'm still waiting for it to get back to the way it was, but it's not going to. No, no, no. Because they went, they they fooled, they fiddled with that prostate enough that now I don't even I don't I hardly get sexual thoughts. Really? Yeah, which is maybe more it's dignified my life a lot. Because <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you know, you know the extreme. I've talked about this before. The extremes that guys go to to get laid. Oh yeah. You, you lose any sense of, uh, of 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 dignity. Right. In the process. That's right. So, so what all this has done is give me my dignity back. Well, good for you. You know, and um, uh, the Me Too movement's never coming after me because I don't even think about it. You know. Right. You know, I try right. to. I try to. But well, you know, things don't. Yeah. My, my my plumbing doesn't work as well as it once did. Yeah, yeah. Well, mine mine uh, doesn't either. You know, but it. What are we talking about this for? This is depressing. What? I mean, that 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 our dicks don't work. I remember a time when my penis led me around through life. You know, everything that I did was dictated by what was below my navel. Yes. You know. Yes. And um, uh, I, you know, I spent. Uh, I think. Okay, let me ask you this. Okay, how much of your waking day would you say you thought about sex? Of my waking not now, day? not now, then. Then? Mm hmm. Probably the whole waking day. Yeah, in in flashes. Right, right. Except 
when I was on stage. And then I would pick out a lady who I wanted to yeah. stroke. Yeah, yeah. But, but you, we're, you're always thinking about it. And I, I don't think uh, uh, most guys are this way. You know, anybody right. that says they aren't this way is, is probably a liar. Right, right, right. But that's when you're younger. Yeah. But I'm you saying know? that, you know, I'm, well, I was, you know, I was uh, in my late 30s when I was working with you guys in San Francisco. And right. that's all that I ever thought about. That's all we ever thought about. You know, it's the reason I got into show business for crying out loud was to get laid at r radio. To get laid and for the records, the free records. Oh, really? Yeah, I got a lot of free records. Do you have a turntable? <laughs> Not anymore. But I have a lot of free. I have a lot of. I got a lot of free records. The sex? You know, I, eh, I bet not so I, much. What? I bet I have a hundred VHS tapes. Really? From stand up, from uh, film. Oh, okay, yeah, from I have. I still have them in storage too. Yeah. From TV. Yeah, they probably don't even work anymore. I wouldn't know. It's... All I know is I slept them from one apartment to another. Yeah. I've got some. I've got some video of you doing a, your act here. I think I re recorded a show that you were on of mine at the Great American Music Hall. Yes. And I have a performance of you. Really? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Was I, I funny? Saying, you're always funny. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. I mean, you, you you had a different persona. Right. Now you kind of look like an out of work jazz musician. <laughs> back, then, back then, you looked like. Um, an out of work drug addict. <laughs> you had you were like, oh, you hair to hand, you know, you know the look you had. Right, right, right. And I was one of the few comics with tattoos. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. What what, what were the tattoos, or what are they? Because they're probably still there. Well, the first one I got was during that period of time, and it's a skull with a sword through its head. And flames coming up and blood dripping down. Mm -hmm. That's a good one, yes. Yeah. Then, on my other shoulder, I have a wolf with two eagle feathers for power. Mm -hmm. On my right leg, I have a medicine wheel with a buffalo. Okay, these are all very, very kind of spiritual. Right, and my left leg, I have the... Um, uh, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. Really? Oh, okay. I have, I have, I have four tattoos. You do? Yeah. Let's see here. There's one above my navel, one below my navel, and one on either hip. Really? And they're the size of a needle. They're, they're very Wait. small, very small. And it's because when I got the radiation, they needed those for guiding. So they tattoo you. Really? Yes. I didn't know that. And I told them, I said, uh, you know, I'll never be buried in Jewish cemetery now. And they said, oh, they had the answer already. So, oh, no, we've talked to the uh, uh, Orthodox uh, rabbis. And they say, if you need it for this, it's okay. No, they actually, it's changed. If you have tattoos, yeah. you can be buried yeah. in consecrated ground. You said that a couple of t times ago when we were talking. Yeah. But no. I talked to a rabbi about it. And in Israel, the rabbinical court looked out and all the 20 somethings would not only have one tattoo, they were tattooed from head to toe. And they went, you know what? There's worse things. Let them be buried. Yeah, right. Right. So now, you what? know. Lenny Bruce used to have a bit about that. He says, oh, I got a tattoo. My grandmother said to me, oh, you have a tattoo? You'll never be buried in a Jewish cemetery. And he said, I stopped to think about it. What are we really saying? Gentiles will bury anybody? <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Were you influenced at all by Lenny Bruce? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Most, Strongly. Most comics your age and my age and so on, we're influenced by Lenny. No oh, question. Oh, big about time. It. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think my uh, my politics somewhat were informed by his comedy. Absolutely. Yeah. And so. a lot of my comedy comes from Groucho. Oh, of course. You but, know? But that's a classic. Mine's Benny, Jack Benny. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you'll be 39 forever. 
Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. Hey, right? listen. It's great talking to you again. You know, it's always I, I, great talking. And I get very, I very, get very nice comments from people about your appearances on the show. They like our discussions because they're very fluid. And, you know. Right. Anyway, uh, we'll talk to you in a couple of weeks, okay? All right. Do you like, want to set up a date after? Oh yeah, just stay right there. All right. Uh, don't 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 break the fourth wall, a third wall, or whatever wall. That whatever is. wall. We'll uh, we'll see you soon. They, ladies Thanks and for listening, people. The name under him is Stephen Kravitz. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. This is Alex Bennett, and uh, I, you know, I got I got to talk to you about something because uh, it's uh, been bothering me. And I don't know, in the last, I don't know, week or so, the amount of people that are watching the show after the fact has gone down considerably, and I don't know why. Um, you know, it could be something to do with YouTube. It could be something to do with whatever, but. Nevertheless, they're le it's less than it was, and I'm getting rather frustrated by this. And I do a lot of work on this show, not when I'm doing it, when I'm off the air, because what I do is I then post the shows and do things like that and put a lot of stuff up that, uh, uh, well, quite frankly, uh, you know, takes a lot of work out of me. Uh, and uh, I don't know why I'm doing it. So I'm thinking of just not posting the shows after they're through. If you don't catch it while it's on, adios. You know, I'll maybe post the audio version, leave it at that. I don't, I don't know. I haven't decided yet. But I'm just so frustrated by it that I'm beginning to say, why do I, why do, I do even an hour and a half of this every night? I could do it like once a week and maybe everybody would be more interested in it and then I have a week for it to marinate and get an audience, and so I don't know. But I, it gets me frustrated because, uh, 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 you know, it, it, it doesn't encourage me, all right? Okay, anyway. Um, by the way, I just want to mention something because I, I want you to know it's there. Uh, if you have, like, um, Alexa, I can say Alexa here. I can't say the actual name of the product because then it will go off here but if you um if you go on there and you have you subscribe to amazon music okay and you go alexa play larry bubbles brown you'll be able to hear larry bubbles brown's comedy uh very simple uh and uh i uh, suggest that uh, you uh you do it okay because uh, we did it tonight at dinner time, and Marjorie had never heard Larry Bubbles Brown, and so we listened to this thing, and I gotta tell you, I mean, he was funny when I knew him years ago. He's so much better now. He is just, he, it, I listened to it, I said, this is, this is perfect comedy. So if you get a chance, listen to Larry Bubbles Brown on, on Amazon. I suppose if you go to Amazon Music, I imagine, you can get it. Let me see here. What would happen if I put in, uh, oh, I go to Amazon here, and I go Larry Bubbles Brown. Okay, Larry Bubbles uh, Brown. Uh, let me see here. In fact, well, let, me, let me let you see the screen that I'm typing it into. Um, let me see here. Come here. Oh, God, I can't, uh, no wonder nobody listens to this thing. Okay, and then I just go, boom, and let's see what we have here. If I hit, uh, if I hit the uh, search, who comes up? There it is. There's his album. And by the way, it's an audio CD. You can stream it. It's unlimited. Listen with our free app. Okay, so I guess you can listen to it with your free app, or you can go over and buy the MP3 for $8.99, or the audio CD for nine ninety eight, okay? But streaming, I guess you just get them. Uh, I, it says free app, listen with our free app. So uh, go listen to them. This is some really, really funny, funny stuff. Uh, I, I really am serious about it. I'm not just trying to plug Larry, uh, but it is really funny, funny stuff. 
and um, it's uh, it's an album called "It's Got to Get Better." <laughs> so anyway, I, he's so funny. He is so absolutely insanely funny, uh, and we listened to it, and I went, you know, this is he's better now than he's ever been. And it's just a shame that he hasn't got anywhere to work, right? You know. So anyway, let's uh, let's bring in some people on our, uh, our our panel, and let's see the Zoom panel uh, assembling here. There we go. Oh, uh, there's uh, there's Pamela. Uh, hello, uh, Jeff, and hello to uh, Brian Neary and uh, Trucker Steve and his dog Rocky and uh, his sidekick, he likes to call him, and uh, Charlie Wallace. Hello, everybody. How are you this evening? Doing good. Doing good? Was that, was that, was that Bubs? Uh, was that the one he just recorded last year? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's Phil, Phil and I went to that one. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he really has, it, it, you know, I haven't heard him perform in years. Yeah. And, and that is better than I remember him, Okay. I mean, so much better. I mean, it's just smooth, and he's got it all down. I mean, it's years and years of honing this 45 minutes, you know, that he does on stage, and it is just brilliant. And I guess you can, uh, it says, listen with our free app. What's the free app? Get the free Amazon Music app. Enter your mobile number, and then you download it, and the app for iOS and Android. And with the app, you can stream millions of songs in Amazon Music, unlimited, or prime music plus you can access blah 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 so uh give it a try you know and if not why not uh buy the mp3 for 8.99 or the audio cd for 9.98 and make him some cash okay that would where be you gonna nice. play the, where, where are you gonna play the cd huh where are you gonna play the cd well don't you have a um <laughs> well you know something wait a minute hold on a second this machine down here, this PC I have, does have a CD player. Oh, okay. Okay, so I, I assume that that would do it, okay? Uh, however, my uh, Mac doesn't have a CD player, and right. neither do any of my other Macs, uh, except for the older Macs that I have. So, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, yep. hello, hello. They all have the now they have all the USB the USB two right all the small yeah. all the small USBs now yeah but you can also you know you can for a very cheap price buy yourself a CD player to hook into a USB port on your uh, mm -hmm. on your computer but no you're right I mean CD players have all but disappeared let me see Fred Smirks that's that's um, uh, that's uh, yes. um, in the dark Mr Ir <laughs> Mr Irving isn't it Long uh, Larkin Larkin, rather. Yep. Why did I say Irving? Irving Mr. Yep. Larkin. I was, yep. You know what it was? I always remember your name by remembering a street, which is Larkin Street in San Francisco, right? Yep. So I said yep. John Larkin. Yep. Uh, tonight, for some reason, my mind was going off in another direction, and I named you after another street. <laughs> Irving Street? Irwin's, Ir 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 Irving Street. This is an Irving in San Francisco. There is? Yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah. I've never heard of it. <laughs> I think it's out in the avenues. Irving. Oh, Irving. Who knows? Who yeah. cares? Anyway. So, yeah. no, don't, don't you, none of you have to be very good tonight because nobody's listening to this. So, <laughs> <laughs> I just oh, decided, I mean, what am I doing this for? You know, so I can get like uh, 10 listeners. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, it's more than 10 listeners, but couple of hundred but jesus it's where are they gone is it that time of the year where nobody's paying attention any longer yeah well, we oh. are getting two hundred and twenty thousand covid infections a day maybe they're in the hospital did i hear today we had three thousand deaths yeah three thousand one hundred and twelve yeah. jeez yeah. almighty yeah god that is horrible how that would be how, a new record how does trump sleep at night Unbelievable. 300,000 by the end of the, by the weekend. They think it's going to be 300,000 by the end of the week. Right now it's at 289. As I said to Marjorie, I said, I'll be 300 by Christmas. Hell, it'll be 400,000 yeah. by Christmas at this rate. You know. It'll be over 400,000 by the time Biden gets into office. 
it, too bad we can't rush that whole process, you know? Yep. And yeah, really. Him. And, and uh, you know, Trump isn't letting him do anything. He's not giving him any information about COVID or anything like that, right? So He still thinks he's going to fucking uh, steal the election and get in there. Uh, you know something? Yeah. It really... Uh, what what what's the old saying that insanity is uh, attempting to do the same thing over and over again and getting the same result? Yeah. Well, well don't you think maybe he should realize this is insane behavior and he's got to stop? <laughs> you know. Yeah, they had a Hanukkah party in the White House tonight, and he was still saying we're going to win. And for what Trump you, says, for, for, he had to have won because he had. 12,000 or 12 million more votes this time than they did in 2016. Oh, wait a minute. There are two Jews in the White House, aren't there? <laughs> yeah. There's, uh, what's her name and his, her husband, Doofus. Yep. Um, no, oh boy. I, I give up. You know, I just give up. Um, today I called back my doctor who wanted to see me on, uh, on Friday. Just, you know, he hasn't seen me in a year, so he wants to check me which in this case means a finger up my ass uh and i called in today and i said you know i really don't feel comfortable about going uh and i noticed that you said on the message that i could have a a, a telecommuni you know a televisit or whatever so the, she said oh of course we can do that so we're going to do a, a, a video visit on uh, on friday mm -hmm. And he'll probably so, just, how's, how's the finger getting up your ass then? I have yeah, no idea. He's probably going to tell me. He's going to just. Terrible. He's going to tell me to probably shove it up my. Uh, my <laughs> feel <cell>. around there. <laughs> feel, feel for any bumps. Feel around, and if I it feels smooth, let him know. You know? <laughs> and what if he that? if he wants a blood draw, he's probably going to have me go down to like a, a local place and get a blood draw. But you know, I just had one two months ago, so I don't think I need one right now. But. Uh, what was that joke he used to say? It was, uh, he'd say, aren't you going to buy me a drink first or something like that? Or? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, uh, it, not, urologists are just not my favorite, you know? I, 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 uh, although this guy, you know, I thought about him a lot, mainly because of the way he pushes his finger up my ass just right. No, I thought about him a lot. And I thought about it, and I said, uh, you know, maybe uh, I should give him a call and see if he wants to see me because he's the guy who was my urologist who said, you've got the, the prostate cancer, you know, he did the biopsy and all that, and then sent me to the oncologist. So I don't, mm -hmm. di I don't know enough about this to know when you throw you over to the oncologist and then he does his stuff. Do you still go back to your urologist or do mm -hmm. you just deal with the oncologist? So uh, I guess not. I guess I go back to my urologist and you know, tell him what's up and so on. So, but uh, it, he, you know, he's a nice guy. He's the only urologist I ever had that I actually liked. You know, because he, he was no nonsense and he was I, I liked him. I liked him a lot. So you know. Anyway, um, by the way, I just heard I heard from Shecky that Tony's brother they found out that what he had was cancerous. And they're going to have to remove oh. it. It's just a little thing in his mouth. So they're going to get rid of it. And he'll probably be okay and good to go. You know, it, it's malignant. I, I don't know if uh, Tony's listening and he wants to call in about that. But our thoughts are with you, Tony, if you are. So, you know. So do I have any other happy news? Well, let's go to Dr. Death. So what is the, what are the statistics <laughs> today, Dr. Death? Americans dying every 30 seconds. Really? COVID. Really? Every 30 seconds, somebody <laughs> kicks off. Do you want to hear the ultimate insanity? Do you know what's going on in Staten Island here in New York? You do, right, uh, Jeff? No, I don't. Oh, oh, you don't? You haven't been reading about this bar, Max's Bar or something like that? Where yeah, he, he refused to shut down at 10 o'clock at night? and oh, yeah. So they then ticketed him, and then they he... He kept doing it, so they tried to close him down, and then hundreds of people showed up to protest. How dare you not let us do indoor eating and drinking? Well, these these idiots live out in Staten Island, which is traditionally, I think, right wing anyway, and they think that probably that COVID is a big hoax started by the Chinese, right? Uh, 
But they've been protesting, and so badly so, that the other day, one of the people who was protesting took his car and ran a cop over. Oh, Literally. Oh, and, oh, and this wasn't like, oh, whoops, I mean, bad, I'm sorry. I just, you know, no, he ran over, he, he hit him with his car, and the cop stuck to the hood, and he <laughs> drove him about 100 feet before the cop fell off. And he's, the cop's going to be okay uh, but he's in the hospital. Yeah. Was the guy drunk? No, he was protesting the, the rules about no indoor eating. Mm. Now, are you ready for this? Staten Island's population makes up 5% of the population of New York State. No, city. New York City. No, really? uh, no, no New York State. 5% oh, really? of the population of New York State. Yeah, I mean, upstate we get much thinner and so on. But anyway, what do you think the amount of COVID deaths are in percentage in Staten Island? 10%. 10%? Very low. 10%, yeah. 25%. Ah, who said 25? John? I saw Como, Como on TV. Oh, you saw him on TV today. <laughs> they, 25? They are 25% of the deaths in New York State, which I'm happy about because it takes the pressure off us here in Manhattan. You know. Wow. 25%. And there were, what, there were 95 deaths yesterday. So that means that there were 95 deaths yesterday, about, uh, about 25 of them were out there in, in Staten Island. And these people are protesting. What? Morons! Just amazing. It just, it, I just, I, I just don't get it. I don't understand it. I always thought they should be part of uh, Jersey. Anyway, they should be part of Jersey. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, they but sell it to Jersey. It, what I think we should do is a penalty for the people in Staten Island. No vaccine for them. They're in the back of the line. Okay, because you don't mind getting. Uh, COVID. So go ahead, go get it. Stay on yeah. your little island. We can kind of tell you not to come, go, leave your island. We can stop the ferry boats going. Okay, so you can't come here unless you swim or take the Verrazano Bridge. Uh, but we'll block that off, and you can just go and have your little parties and protests, and you can eat indoors, and you can breathe in each other's faces, and all of that. No vaccine for you. No. Yeah, there's a church, a Calvary church is called. They've been fined the last three days $25,000 a day because they reopened. And they're they're like rehabbing drug people and stuff like that, but they're still congregating and singing and all that stuff. And they're in Santa Clara court today. But, oh, really? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. Well, God will protect them. Yeah, exactly. No mass. All these guys protesting out front of City yeah. Hall. No mass. They come out there and they're speaking with everybody. Well, it, 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 in fact, let me just let me just remind you that you know mm -hmm. that God. Uh, they say God will God will protect us. Who do you think gave you COVID in the first place? Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, one of my best friends is in a wheelchair and he he's paralyzed from the waist down, mm -hmm. and he said something about that about not wearing the mask, you know. And and I'm like, man, you know. Be, being surrounded by that and already you're like that it's, it's unbelievable that they're still well you know, Bub, like bubs today i did an interview with bubs which you'll hear later on this week where he asked me do you are you going to do the uh, the uh, vaccine and i said yeah and he said well why because you know isn't it going to be dangerous and i said no you know it absolutely is not i mean so far as i know this is not a virus they're putting in you it's something that aids the antibody to do its work Okay, and that's how it works. Um, and uh, then, then he said to me, and and by the way, the the lead headline on uh, on Drudge is something like uh, uh, vaccinations found to cause problems. You know, wait a minute, let me just get Drudge here. I want to get the headline exactly so that I can, I don't have to um, uh, paraphrase it without knowing it. Here it goes. It says, "Vax allergy warning." anaphylactic reaction now they found in england that there were anaphylactic which is a uh, uh, allergy reaction you blow it up like a stuck toad uh to the uh, vaccine 
How many of those do you think cases happened? Two. Well, you know that, right, Brian? There were <laughs> two. I read the story. Two, yeah. and both people had EpiPens, mm -hmm. which yeah. meant that they were highly allergic to <clears> something, <throat> okay? Yeah. So yeah. there's no problem with allergy. And if you've got a, an EpiPen, you're, you're good to go, yeah. okay? Yeah. So, uh, you know, and we need people to get these goddamn shots, you know. We need to get yeah, to that 75%. What? So someone someone posted on, new, they said on Newsmax, two people died because of the vaccine. Bullshit. Uh, no, no, two people I, did I, not die. I know, I know, but that's how, I, I don't know if this person misread it or if Newsmax is blowing stuff out. But. Well, let's go over to Newsmax and see what their headlines are all about. Newsmax. Yeah. My friend in the wheelchair, he's talking about, well, God says when it's your time to go. And I said, yeah, but I wouldn't have somebody let somebody cough on you. Mm. No. Now, let's see here. Uh, yeah, so step out in front of that car. If it's your time to go, you'll go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah right. He already did. That's how he's paralyzed. He got a car accident. <laughs> U.S. COVID deaths top 3K. They have that. Uh, the, the, uh, why don't they name it? They're gonna name, they want to name it the Trump vaccine? They should call it the Trump virus as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Here is something, though, that they have on Newsmax that they're proud to say, and it's true. Newsmax uh, is getting higher ratings than Fox. Hmm. You will be happy to know that Fox is not getting good ratings anymore. In fact, there are more people. Do you, you know what the number one network is now? CNN. MSNBC? CNN. What? CNN. Uh, MSNBC wow. is third, I think, after, after Fox. Newsmax is in there. I don't know if Newsmax is beating out Fox, but they are taking away a lot of people. And so uh, Fox is starting to lose people. And CNN is on top, which is amazing. You know, so. I, I read uh, Trump has lost a lot of followers on um, on Twitter since the election, and uh, Biden's gained uh, followers. I, I really think um, after Trump's out of, out of the White House, he's not going to have too too many places where he can blabber anymore because Fox is probably going to be sick of him, you know. You know, he'll go to Newsmax, but... Well, Newsmax. he'll tweet like crazy, but nobody will talk about his tweets. Yeah, yeah, you know. yeah, he'll be irrelevant. He'll, he'll find irrelevant. out how fast people forget who you are. Yeah, yeah. You know. I mean, he'll still have that cult following, though, but but I, th I think that's going to start... I don't even uh, think he'll have the cult following. I think they'll start following somebody else who's kind of like him. Yeah, yeah. You know. Uh, did you hear that? Uh, what's his name? Your uh, your uh, your senator, uh, uh, Ted Cruz. Oh, uh, wonderful! Uh, uh, he, he was going to go plead Trump's case in front of the Supreme Court. However, the Supreme Court, in a one-line verdict, <laughs> said no, no. no. This is something different. This is a different one. This is uh, the one where, like, uh, like seventeen states are. Are, are trying to throw out all four of the, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the whatchamacallit states votes out, the, the, the swing states. Mm. So, this is a, so, so the, the, you know, the, the Supreme Court could still hear that. They haven't made a decision yet, well, but I, think, I, I doubt they will. No, the Supreme Court is not, uh, they said, we just don't even want to deal with this, basically. Yeah. I don't think yeah. they want to be in, in any position to have to deal with it. First of all, because the people who are there right now, three of them at least, owe their jobs to Trump, and I don't think they want to be put in the position to have to make some kind of deal out of this. And they yeah. said three, three or four of them uh, were were heavily involved with the whole Gore, mm -hmm. uh, the Gore Florida yeah. stuff. So they already have the background of the history. So yeah, 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 yeah. So I mean, uh, uh, I think they're pretty well. You know, they don't want anything Technically, to do Technically, hmm? each state is responsible for their own election, mm -hmm. whether they're federal or whatever. Each state is responsible for passing their own election laws and their own election system. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Texas doesn't have any business telling Pennsylvania what to do. Well, that's right. Ted Cruz, 
with, with Ted Cruz, is there more of a person that got, you know, slammed by the president than him to be going back and, and why is he? Yeah, him? why is he such a toady for Trump? After all, I mean, Trump even called his father a his, murderer. Yeah, <laughs> and his wife ugly or something. <laughs> no, something with her. Yeah, I mean, and yeah. and, and so and so uh, uh, Ted Cruz is like in the Trump camp. Why? It's yeah, he, I mean, power. maybe before because he felt maybe he could get something out of him because he was a senator. But this man has no power anymore, although he thinks he does. He just yeah. uh, what wasn't he? What was it? Well, he did some uh, of those, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, orders. You know, executive, executive orders. orders. Executive orders. And what was it about today? I can't remember. Did some kind of executive order. Uh, and it, it, it was something where you go, nobody's going to pay attention to this. Nobody's going to mm. honor this executive order. It's ridiculous. Yeah, and he's he's still appointing people. Yeah. To post in the government. To begin with, number one, I want to know why. Why did he fire whoever he was going to fire? So he had, then had to hire somebody. And then those people that he hired, why did they accept knowing they're never they're not going to be able to hold the job for more than about 43, 42 days? Hope they've already had COVID. <laughs> if they get it if they have it. Yeah, yeah, this is like an Oprah show. You've got COVID and you've got COVID and you've got COVID. Yeah, Rudy Giuliani infected like 30 people yeah. when he spoke at, uh, in Michigan there. Oh, really? Oh, really? Uh, yeah, did he, did, he inf fight. did they infect them, or did he come so close that they say they have to quarantine themselves? Well, he said there's there's 30 people that are tested positive. Oh God! First he farted on them, and then he breathed on them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that fart can travel more than six feet, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he shut down the Arizona legislature, <laughs> but that's just because of the contact. They, I don't think they've tested positive yet jesus <laughs> almighty oh god and then today he was leaving the hospital waving out the window because he got the he got he, he get what did he get remdesivir which which thing he got i think it got the other one yeah uh, oh, yeah everything yeah there's a cocktail yeah, it's whatever we cannot get yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah well aren't well, sure? he survived hmm? he survived so you with your golden seeds like he had mm -hmm. to feel good that we went through well, you know, I mean, I did have the same procedure he had for prostate cancer by the same doctor. Yeah. I get to know that my doctor's hands were up Rudy Giuliani's <laughs> ass, and then they went up mine. Yeah. So. Now Trump's up his. Huh? Now Trump's, now Trump's up his. his. Yeah, right. Oh, boy. Anyway, so, ah, boy, my eyes have been itching. Ah, boy. It's uh, not as tired today, but yeah. Phil sent me a thing saying, here's why you're tired all the time. And he, he had the radiation. I had the radiation. It's the radiation that can do it. You know, it can keep making you fatigued for a good year after, the, after it happens. So I got my coffee here, you know. Are your eyes like that because you haven't had that surgery? When you have that surgery, it'll help that? Well, my eyes are burning today, but so are Marjorie's. <clears throat> so, you know, it's just a little worse because I need the surgery. But I'm not going into ho in any hospital, even the <laughs> Eye and Ear Institute or whatever this place was, because I just don't want to take the chance. And I knew by yeah. this time, it was December 1st, it would be getting bad enough that I'd be afraid to go in there. And I am now. I'm af I, I, I'm afraid to leave the house. Okay? That's a good answer. Uh, because, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I live in a, a neighborhood where, where, where blacks are twice as, um, uh, have twice the chance of dying of COVID as whites. And there's a good reason why. They don't wear a mask. Mm hmm you know, I listen to Trump, uh, uh, to, uh, what's his name every day, uh, to uh, Cuomo. He's on every other day now. Um, mm. And he, uh, he always gives us a lecture about how black people are disproportionately um, getting COVID 
uh, at, a, at a rate of twice the amount of whites, and Hispanics one and a half times that of whites, which, you know, and that's why they want to get him, get to these people and, and, and not let them disproportionately be left out of the matrix of giving out the, the COVID vaccine, and I'm all for that. I have no argument with that. But I do think that if you come into my neighborhood, which is a predominantly black neighborhood, and you see the amount of people wearing masks, it will just put a chill down your spine. It's like walking a gauntlet. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what it is, or, you know, if they read that blacks are twice as, as have twice the chance of getting COVID and, and dying from it as whites, then you would think they would wear masks, but they don't. And I don't, I don't, Charlie, come on, you're a black guy, explain it to this white. Well, I, I, I wear a mask, I don't even go out my door without putting a mask on. I, I could go, go to the trash can. Okay, but how about, how about other blacks that you see when you go, well, you don't go out so you can't see no, them. No, I haven't seen anybody <laughs> in nine months. Yeah, hmm. yeah. Saying that live, well, we were saying that live, the, the, the guy, the news guy, the black news guy said, yeah, he see he's black, so he says, "Well, I'm not trusting the vaccine." He goes, "Oh, but I work on a white show, so maybe they'll give me the real one." <laughs> <laughs> that was good. They had a really good news thing. Well, on. it's okay. interesting that the black community is more distrustful of this oh, vaccine yeah. than the white community, and I don't understand that one. I mean, I would think that if you found that something was affecting, like for instance, I'm. 80 years of age, and so I'm in a, in a comorbidity group. And so therefore, hey, if they, they, they start the line down the street to get shots, I'm in that line. And you would think that blacks would be the same way. Yes, Charlie. You have to realize yeah. that for 30 years, they were giving black guys syphilis and not treating it just to see how bad syphilis would and not telling them about well, it. Well, uh, but admit this, that was better than getting no sex at all. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't give them sex, they gave them I know, I know. Uh, they, well, they gave them a lot of other things too. I mean, there were a yeah, lot I mean, of other- Yeah, I mean, that's not the only thing. And yeah. the women, they were given hysterectomies and stuff against their will. I mean, why would, why would any of us trust any of the white established community? Well, do you trust us? I trust my doctor. I don't know if I trust every doctor in general, but I trust my doctor. Okay. Is, is he white or black? He's white, but I've been seeing him for 30 years. Yeah. Okay. But so I mean, he's had plenty of time to kill me. Do you, do you, I mean, how do you get the message out to the black community that this is okay? This is, they're, they're not testing it just on you, they're giving it to white people too. Yeah. You know, they're giving it to Hispanic people, they're giving it to Chinese people, they're giving it to all types of people. Um, and, and by the way, I think probably there will be a large portion of blacks uh, getting it be, just by virtue of the fact that the first in line are the health care workers, and a lot of the health care workers are black. Yeah. You know, it seems to become a very predominantly black uh, profession. Um, so, I mean, uh, what is it going to take to get everybody to, you know, to take the shot you know by the way you do know I, I think i mentioned this last night the, the first person to get it in england was this old lady 90 year old woman who yeah. got it and do you know who the second one was william shakespeare william shakespeare <laughs> yeah, that's right yeah his name is william shakespeare yeah. and, and somebody said to me what are the chances of his name being and i said if my last name were shakespeare and i had a kid what am i going to name him yeah. Got to name him William Shakespeare. Yeah. What, I'm going to call him Bob Shakespeare and have everybody laugh at him? <laughs> so anyway, William Shakespeare got uh, got a, got a shot. You know. Um, what is what is the plan? I mean, there's no plan, right? But but I mean, they're starting to they're going to start sending them out. I think they said they're going to start sending them out today, even though they're not approved yet. I mean, are they going to notify you? Your doctor's going to notify That's you? That's what I want to know. Out? That's what I want to know. Are they going to say, hey, uh, Alex, we know you're 80. Come on down. You know, or 81 okay. by the time. I, I, got an email. What? I got an email from uh, Kaiser Permanetti. Because mm -hmm. I got Kaiser. And they, uh, 
they said we'll let you know when we get them they're they're on their way so hmm. yeah well, but you probably won't be in first in line in california what's the what's the uh, every uh, state is know. making up their own yeah you, you know pecking order yeah, yeah still what's the pecking order in california do you know yeah, yeah. i think it's still the the um the nurses and doctors, then it's like the, the nursing homes and the people in there. Yeah. yeah. Here's something that I was wondering about today because they were saying that uh, each state's going to get a different amount of vaccines ba based on their population. And I thought about that for a second. And, and, of course, Cuomo was acting like that was okay because we're a big state. And we're going to get, uh, I think, 100,000 uh, doses of the stuff, Hundred. No, 170 doses, 70,000 doses of it, because we're one of the biggest states in population. And I started to think about it, and I'm going, yeah, but we don't have an infection rate like North Dakota or South Dakota. Shouldn't they be sending it proportionately to states based upon their infection rate? Yeah, but they don't got that many people in those states, you know? Yeah, but and you wouldn't send that much there. But when, shouldn't you do it by infection rate? I mean, why should New York... Since we're we're keeping it down a bit, it's getting worse, but we're keeping it down. Shouldn't we be maybe in the back of the line, and the people who are the states that have really got it be put to the front of the line? Instead, we're saying it's all in proportion to population. And I don't know if that does that make am I making sense here at all, or am I just full of it? They shouldn't send any to Idaho. Those people don't want it. They're protesting it. Are they There's really? Yeah, they're, they're, I saw on TV today they were carrying signs, you know, the virus is bullshit and the, the vaccine is, you know, crossing it out. We don't want no vaccines. It's kind of like it's with fun, food. Yeah. It's like with food. You don't want some of that? Great. We'll eat it. You know. Yeah. No, no, I think what I don't understand is if you won't vaccinate your pets, like your dog, for various diseases like rabies, you know, to protect yourself or other animals. Why wouldn't you protect yourself by getting a vaccine and other people? Well, I, you know, I think the reason you get the vaccine is to protect other people and yourself. Yeah. You yeah. Know. Hopefully. Well, yeah. I just wish there was more of it. Uh, there would... me, me being a truck driver, I might have to do it regardless because uh, Customs Border Protection might uh, make it mandatory for drivers to get it. <clears throat> I, I would say they probably would say that. Yeah. But if it's not available to you yet, you don't have to get it. You know, I mean, it's a question of how much. Like, for instance, we, uh, America, has said they were going to take a million doses or something like that. And um, um, what do you call it? The, the company that's doing it. Uh, Pfizer? Pfizer. Pfizer, yeah. Said, uh, would you, we, we, we're willing to sell you another million doses if you want to say you're going to take them. We'll put you out front oh i know that's what trump did okay so he, he turned it down he turned it right. down so they mm -hmm. say well we can't get you any more till april because we've already now a lot of the stuff you wouldn't buy to other countries all right yep. so trump yesterday put out an executive order saying no country can have it till we do what uh, they're, <laughs> they're did, a private did, company i mean how do you do that they're yeah. a private company. They're a private company, just like we were. We are, and when we're doing tests, we got to send out tests to whoever was paying for it. I mean, how do you deprive another country? You can't. Of it's this. Just it's an asshole. Well, of course, we all know that. You know. It's just bullshit. Yeah. Like all, like all this shit. Yep. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, uh, let's see here. Uh, Forbin writes, Alex yells at Soul Brother, wear a mask because Black Lives Matter, yo. Well, that's true. I mean, I, I think that if Black Lives Matter, that, that should extend to wearing a mask, you know. And, and, uh, and, and I, I, I can't say anything to somebody like, hey, wear a mask. The only time I ever do it is if some guy's begging on the street and he isn't wearing a mask. I don't give him the dollar. I tell them wear a mask because, you know, but uh, I don't dare tell anybody to wear a mask in this neighborhood. I, I'd be throttled, you know. Why don't you give them a mask? You have a couple cases back there in that room. Well, I'm hoarding them. Okay. 
<laughs> and every come cat, on, do every, some good. Give them a mask instead of a dollar. We've got about three hundred of them, I think. <laughs> and and every time I go in and say, well, I think it's time for a new mask because the other one's getting a little rank. Okay, uh, and uh, I I go get another one. Marjorie says, "Be careful! Don't use them all." <laughs> And I'm going, well, how long do you think this is going to last? And let's say it lasts for the next 10 years. You don't think we're going to be able to buy more masks or that your overlords in China won't send you another case of them? You know. Because yeah. all our masks are Chinese masks, and they're the most professional masks. You know. Yeah, we. I, I, I grabbed some on the way into my office, and I grabbed some on the way out. I don't have 300. <laughs> you are, yeah, but, you 10, know, 20. I mean, uh, where are people getting masks these days? They don't have to buy them. They can just, uh, I think, it's in, in, I think you can go in the subway and they give them to you. Oh, really? Yeah. Costco? Yeah. yeah Costco they, has them. In fact, in the subway, they not only give you a mask if you don't have one, but they give you some, oh, little, really? yeah, some hand sanitizer, a little two-ounce oh. bottle of hand sanitizer. Does it say New York City on it or... Um, New York City subway. Uh, and I think it says "Death to Trump" on them. <laughs> That's funny. I think. What is Seffeld? What's Seffield? Seffield is that? Oh, Seffield. Sef 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 <clears throat> yeah, it's like some science thing. It means like the the blinking pattern of a star of a star. Oh, so yeah. they take the uh, scientists, astronomers. They used to take measurements from. How those stars are far mm -hmm. apart from the blinking, blah blah blah. Yeah. So that's, yeah, yeah, they're variable stars. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, so that's we we take data and stuff like that. So oh, they, somebody just wrote. Forman Colossus just wrote in California vaccine Pfizer phase one A is health workers, healthcare workers, and first responders, employees working with patients with COVID nineteen in emergency departments. That's first in line. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I imagine second in the line would just be healthcare workers in general. Uh, then, then I think it's going to uh, people in old folks' homes, you know, in nursing care facilities. Uh, and then when it, it, I think I think we're third in line. I think we'll probably get ours around February. If, uh, you know when, Jeffrey? Any any indication? No. Uh, turn on your mic. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. And I hope to be what you're calling number three or whatever. Yeah. Sure. Well, well I, I'm going to be 81. So I'm sure I'm in that that next bunch. Okay. Uh, uh, just your age. It's mm -hmm. also what health conditions. Well, I mean, I, I, I had radioactivity and stuff. I have some minor comorbidities you know yeah. or, give your doctor the list or what was your it? foot <laughs> your tooth your you know just give them your whole list that you go through with us all the what time. was that comedian it's on saturday, night, saturday night live who called it cormobit cormobitities <laughs> yeah comorbidities. and maybe you're good because you know they're doing like 71 to 80 and then 81 to 90. So since you turn 81, you'll be in that bracket. That'd be nice. Well, wait a minute. Is 81 before the one? <laughs> I don't that, know. <laughs> the 70 to 80s are before me or after me? No, they're, they'd be after you. But They'd be after me. If it's at the 81 mark, then you made that cut. That'd be nice. Yeah, I hope they get around to me before I drop dead. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, uh, Jeff. The update on Connecticut. Yeah. According to my expert. Yeah. <laughs> between January and May. As soon, the, as soon as the vaccines received, healthcare workers, long-term facility residents, and first responders go. Okay. And then in January through May, the critical workforce, other congregate settings, I don't know what that is, <laughs> adults over 65 and high-risk individuals under 65. And then in December is the rest of us. Oh, 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 and September. When is the rest of us? June. June. June? Oh, by then we'll all be dead. Yeah. Well, you guys won't because you will have gotten your vaccines. Yeah. Well, you get to, you, you since you're younger than Jeff, he yeah. gets you his before you can get yours. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what you get for marrying a younger woman. Okay. She's going <laughs> to. 
you know, she's going to she's going to resent you for being immune. <laughs> I have to clean the house then. Huh? Yeah. I'll clean the house yeah. all, all by myself. Yeah, but it's you know, oh, sixty-five. That's a big chunk of people, I would assume. Uh, that, that is 65 yeah, and over yeah. yeah but but you know the thing is that that we've got to get this done you know we got oh, yeah, to and and it's just not fast enough i mean I, it's just shame that this country didn't ask for more okay on the other hand let me ask you brian what would you rather have the pfizer or the moderna uh one shot and i know that it didn't have to be temperature controlled yeah so that's moderna, moderna. right yeah. And then what yeah, about but I, you'd like to see, you know, I'd like to see other people get it first, of course. What about the AstraZeneca? Is it uh, temperature controlled or is it? I don't think so. I think I, Pfizer is the only one, but, but I could be wrong. AstraZeneca is only, I believe, or the Johnson & Johnson is only 70 percent effective. Yeah. And they paused one time because they were having some weird results, but then they picked back up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember that. So, yeah. uh, you know, I, I, yeah, I would rather have the Moderna, which is probably what we're going to get, because that's going to be what's going to be more available in that second wave, because it's going to be until April before we can get any more Pfizer. Yeah, but the, the Pfizer thing is good because, like, they didn't have some of these allergic, high allergic reaction people in their data. Mm -hmm. So for them to be going through this and to find these small little things like that is, is good, you know, because then they can... Uh, alert everybody right away and then people know what to expect well uh as they have said uh they have found that the people who uh, uh who uh have the um, have the adverse reaction allergic reaction were people who they, each one but they had two of them and both of them had epipens on them yeah. you know so they were very much a high risk group that way so that what happened was they shot themselves up with their EpiPen when they started, you know, bloating up like a toad, and uh, it took care of the problem. So you know, it's it's not a, but the problem is that you got somebody like Drudge. His big headline is, you know, <laughs> vaccine allergies, and what are people going to say? Oh, I'm afraid. Maybe I have an allergy. Maybe I'll, you know, and they don't have the facts. It's only two. People. And you say right. that Newsmax was saying they died? I don't know. This lady posted that, so I don't know if she's full of it or if, she, if Newsmax was doing something stupid. I don't know. Uh, and then you got all these anti vaxxers. I mean, we have to deal with them on a rather yeah. constant basis. You know. uh, wow. You know. Anyway. So what? Like is, that dumb bitch, Jenny McCarthy. Oh. She should have been. She should have been arrested. I mean, you know, I don't mind if you have an opinion about something. I do mind if you have an opinion and it kills people. Okay, how many kids died because their parents wouldn't give them a vaccine because that scientist Jenny McCarthy told them you shouldn't. And how they go to school? Those kids can't go to school without vaccination shots. Nope, they homeschool them. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, not only will those kids be dead, but they'll be dumb as well. So, you know, it's uh, good to know. Um, what else is happening in the world? Anything that we... Uh... Yeah. Huh? Well, I guess that's it. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm just trying to think of what else I saw in the news. Uh, 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 well, did you see what happened with the rocket that... Uh, uh, they sent up, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, SpaceX. S F uh, SpaceX. 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 Uh, uh, this was for a Mars uh, thing they're going to do. Because mm -hmm. uh, uh, what's his name? Tesla. Elon Musk. Elon, Elon Musk, Musk wants, wants to bypass the moon completely and just go directly to Mars and mm -hmm. um, do that deal. So they were testing one that goes to Mars. And then they brought it back down to land on the pad like their rockets do, and right. it crashed and exploded. So. Oh, no, really? Yeah, yeah. That's a bummer. No, well, according to Elon Musk, it did everything it had to do, okay? So it was okay. Look who we got here. Guy we haven't talked to in a while. Obviously, he's doing welding. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there he is. Yeah, there's, uh, there's James Lee. Hello, James. How you doing? 
Yeah, is that you your got a good signal coming into Hawaii? Yeah, is that the your... roaches are good? Is that your normal attire now in Hawaii? Hey, hey, you, you guys stay the hell off our island, Matt. We don't need you around here. <laughs> well, Jesus Christ, we don't want to get sick. Shit. You know, you have an advantage in a way because if you don't want to let any people in, how's COVID going to get on the island? But if COVID gets on the island, it has yeah, no it'll way kill to us get all. out. What? Yeah, it'll kill us all. Actually, we're all socially distanced. My neighbor's like 400 yards away anyway, so I'm out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. But how is it in Hawaii? How is the uh, how's the COVID situation? Oh, it's real shitty. You can't even get any food. McDonald's, you know, the one you know, they they put it in a paper bag and you pick it up by the damn doorway. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> and they don't even have very, a very high in, in, uh, infection rate there, do they? Oh well, no, we're getting we're hitting about uh, the total state hits about oh around uh, the- eighty a day. All, on all islands, but it's all—it's mostly in Honolulu. They hit about I, I do know years. that they are right below New York in infection rate. Yeah, on, on, on my island, we get about five a day. What yeah. island, John? So I'm on the big island of Hawaii. There's only 200,000 of us, so we're small. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're a country. Yeah. You're spread the out. Is, we're short of doctors, you know what I mean? There you're ain't no doctors. Out. You're, yeah, really you're out in the middle out. of nowhere. All you got is your pit bulls. Well, I do. I, I, I do know that when, when dogs uh, do they still do that? Where if you bring a dog to Hawaii, you have to quarantine oh, yeah. the dog the for what three months or something like that? No, uh, well, actually, uh, it's almost a year. But you could do the pre-quarantine before you come. You, you could uh, do the, the the rabies titer in California, New York. Yeah, you'll yeah. spend about a thousand dollars to bring your dog over. Wow! So because you, what happened? dollars airfare to bring the dog to Honolulu. Another three hundred dollars uh, health certificate, all that bullshit. Well, and the reason they do this, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, is because Hawaii is an island or a group of islands, and they are separated just by water. Okay, so if let's say something like rabies comes onto their island, oh, yeah. it has nowhere to go to get out of that island. You know? Yeah, that's why we got these. You know, that's why we got those damn koki frogs. That was brought in. Those what damn frogs that whistle all night drive you nuts oh really and yeah mongoose same thing they look like squirrels yeah they were there to control the rats they got loose and they and, took over and so then they had nowhere to go it's not yeah, like they could go to a yeah, yeah 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 so now we got all that shit and plus we got great roaches and termites oh yeah well Oh, that'll, uh, they'd love your bookcase behind you, Mr. Bennett. Really? That's the good oh, last boy. six months. How uh, big are the ter- how, how big are the termites? Oh, uh, actually, they're very small. They go right through the screen. Really? So that's why you know I got we have to have our our house every four years. We got to tent them. We have to what? Oh, tent, tent the house. Tent them. Yeah. And then what? Do you do? We ain't gonna have a house. And then what do you do? Then you you fumigate. Yeah, you leave for yeah. a couple of days. You spend a couple thousand bucks. That's it. Yeah, and then you come back, you don't have a house. and you got dead roaches all over the place. Well, yeah, but hey, and plus you got the little lizards, the the get ghost, you know, the ones that uh, the green ones. Can you give me just one reason why I should want to live in Hawaii with all that That's going on? You New Yorkers wouldn't last. You guys are just too uptight, man. No, I mean, That's I'm why not, you didn't last. I don't want to go you somewhere where they. You want to Honolulu? Is that what happened? You know. Well, you I tried mean. It. I, I just, you know, I, I want to know why I should go to Hawaii to begin with. I mean, I've been to Hawaii, and yeah, I, know, I found you're out. Not in the, you're not in the, the water, you know. You're not, you're not well, in that lifestyle. Uh, you're, you're I, listen, I, I can say a whole bunch of things that are negative about Hawaii, but I'll start yeah. with the worst one, the ukulele. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Corral. Maybe, yeah. maybe the worst instrument ever invented. Acapella. You're not into acapella. Oh, God. Here we go. <laughs> you're not into acapella. It, 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 because you're Jewish, you can't oh, even be the damn oh, spam. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Jesus let's have Christ. a little. Uh, let's have a little. Uh, uh, both of you start playing together. Let's have a little. No, 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 no. Let's no, no, play. <laughs> hey, listen. I'm trying to see how many people I can have stop listening to this show. And I think the ukulele might be my exit out of here. See, and you can't yeah, do part of None of that stuff. That's Hawaii. Barbecued pork, you know, yeah. shredded pork, yeah. pot belly, pork belly, all that good stuff. Well, what happened was I stayed. You know, you I, Jewish guys, all we got to do is give you chicken. Jesus I stayed at a, at a hotel in Hawaii, and unfortunately, they put me in an, a, a hotel room where right outside the window, yeah. they had a Hawaiian band playing. 
Oh, man, you're not culturally relevant. Because Jesus the second Christ. most disgusting instrument is the steel guitar. Yeah, you you got to be culturally relevant, man. Jesus. You, you know, and so between that and the ukulele, you know, it, <clears throat> to call it Hawaiian music is an oxymoron. All right? Yeah. And also, your skin is too light. You get sunburned too damn easy. <laughs> that happened, too. I, I put on, a, hey, I'm going outside. I don't want to get sunburned, so what do I do? I wear a shirt, right? Yeah. No, it just goes right through the shirt. Yeah. <laughs> it just burns right through the shirt. And you're sensitive. You get mosquito bites. You get infections. It's terrible. Well, you walk yeah. to the beach, you step on a poison star. Can I just say this to be just, I, mean, I don't mean this in any rude or demeaning <laughs> manner. That's cool. But fuck Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> Aloha. <laughs> <laughs> And I say that being able to say huma huma nuka nuka apa wapa uh -uh. Yeah, all that shit, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, like I said, you know, we're still alive. We're not dead. I'm going to check out. It's just nice meeting and see you guys that's, again. That's uh, our, our friend Mr. Lee, Mr. James Lee. He is on the big island of Hawaii. Do you ever hear from our friend, uh, what's her name? Uh, what's her name? Auntie, yeah. Uh, Auntie, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. She's, she was, last I heard, she was over in Kona somewhere. Oh, really? She moved? You know, well, you know, us folks on the island, we don't go nowhere. We're real local. Yeah, well, I mean, we stopped hearing from her, and I worried about her because she's not on Facebook and she's not on anything. And I just, you know, I wondered where yeah. she was, you know. Yeah, I don't know. So, anyway, anyway, just wanted to say good, you got a good signal coming out of the Wi Fi. Uh, you know, I can read you guys. Yeah, well. And keep it up. Keep up the good, uh, keep up the good of the show and all that stuff. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you, James. And call us anytime. We love hearing from you from Yeah, but, Hawaii. but stay the hell away from us till we get a you know, till you get all vaccinated. Hey, listen, up. I'm not, I, I'm staying away from everybody else myself, you know. Um, hey, we're all old guys. You're retired, but not dead. You know how that is. Yeah. You're retired, but not dead. Yeah. You're yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How old are you now, James? Just like you used to say in the military, you know, we're, I'm over 77. Expect it. <laughs> Expect it. Don't even cure them, man. Just keep them comfortable. Okay. Talk to you later. Yeah. Okay, bye bye. Bye, James. Aloha. Uh, Watch oh. the roaches. Aloha. Aloha. Yeah, yeah. Go to go to Hawaii where they got the roaches. You know, the other worst place in the world is Florida. Uh, they've got things down there called palmetto bugs. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Oh yeah, I think I know what those are. Yeah, they're a flying roach. They're fl flying they're roach. flying giant, giant roach. Yeah. <laughs> James is having a hard time leaving us. I know. <laughs> yeah. I got to exit Zoom. Yeah. You know, this... Cut, just throw the switch, sir. Hit, hit the <laughs> thing. It says end. It says yeah. leave Zoom at the bottom. Then. On mine, it says end. I'm trying yeah. to get you off my Apple MacBook Pro. Let's oh, uh, just hit end. The bu button says end. Not that I'm trying to get rid of you, but if you want to go. I jam you up. Big red button says leave. There it is, leave. Mine says end. Well, you hit end, and then up, it, above it comes up a thing saying leave. Yeah. So anyway, uh, always good to hear from him. God, that was nice. That's it. Mm. That's terrific. Uh, but I am right about it. How many have been to Hawaii? Have you been to Hawaii, Jeff? Yeah. You agree with me? Uh, you know, I went to a wedding, and it was it was short time so and then you got the hell out of there kind of i spent a month there one time and about two weeks in i was like get me out of here well i had to go over there to work once a uh, guy i worked for bought a radio station there and sent me over to set it up and so i was over there for about a month and i gotta tell you well first of all after a week one day they said, they said to me, you know, you're going to get island fever. And I said, what's that? They said, you'll find out when you have it. <laughs> and one day they then all come back from lunch and I'm sitting in the lobby in a coma, literally in a coma. I mean, just sitting there. <laughs> and he said, well, you got island fever. He said, it happens to everybody about, oh, I don't know, about a weekend in which you go into this literal coma and you're going huh and they say it's because you know all the the, the breezes and the you know the the ukuleles the whole thing just starts to get to you and you go 
boring. You just, and, and, and for a couple of days, you're in, you're literally in La La Land. So mm. I just went home and slept for like three days, and then I came back to work and continued working on the radio station. But uh, it was, it was, you know, after a couple of days, it's uh, the other thing I couldn't get used to is okay, you're standing here, and the sun is shining relentlessly on you, mm -hmm. while across the street it's there's nice. a sh there's a storm there's a literally a shower am i right charlie you know what i'm talking about yeah that happened several times while i was there in hawaii it's like one side of the street dry yeah. as a bone other side of the street it's raining like hell and there was no way to you know what should i bring take to a should i take an umbrella with me to work <laughs> yes <laughs> or just cross the street and walk <laughs> well you can carry the umbrella to shade yourself from the heat from the sun and then you can do it to stop the mm. rain you know i it, thought that was the funniest thing i ever saw yeah yeah alex how long were you in in florida three months was that long it felt like three years but it was three months mm. there is nothing worse than florida it's kind of Hawaii with a bad attitude. Uh, man, I, I so hated Florida. You know, I, I just wish death on everybody that lived there. You know? um, except for uh, some of our friends who live down there, like Albert and so on, who we don't want to, you know, be. I got an aunt and uncle that live down there. Oh, really? Yeah, in Stewart, Florida. Yeah. It's just north of Flor uh, Fort Lauderdale. Why do they go there? You know, I mean, I'm Jewish, and I have no desire to move there. <laughs> the weather. Well, so it's a it's a free ticket. Yeah, but, I mean, if I have one of two. Born there. It was warm. It's warm. I was yeah. born there. Oh, you were born there? Yeah, but I, I never went back. My mother literally brought me to California when I was, like, one month old. You know, literally, and so I, I've never been back. Really? Yeah, I've, I'm pretty much a Californian. Yeah. Grew up in the Bay Area. Yeah, I, I, you know, if I want, if I want sun, I, California's pretty good when it comes to sun. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, it's not. Uh, there's no real problem with that. Uh, it's like 70 degrees today in San Francisco. Yeah. Yeah, this week has been 70s. Today it was. Uh, let's see, 34 degrees here in New York. And it snowed. Wow. Yeah. First time this year. Oh, it was time for Connecticut. Really? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah we're we... not getting any rain at all. It's weird. Yeah. Yeah. It's a um, dry spell. Yeah. So, um, are you, how many of you are looking forward to the end of 2020, and f <laughs> and and feeling like this has been the worst year ever? Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> But December. then I thought about it, and I went, maybe 2021 is going to be worse. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> you know? And we're going to be saying to each other, don't you want to go back to the wonderful days of 2020? You know, I mean, it's not going to yeah. get that much better for a while. You know, I'm going to really miss those Trump press conferences. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that's been good about the whole period of time since the election is we really haven't heard that much from him. You know, he yeah. hasn't insinuated himself on us. Although I am saying, that I don't know how you feel about it, getting a little weary of Joe Biden press conferences. He, like, does one of those a day. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Uh, uh, you don't get tired of it, right, Charlie? I haven't seen I haven't seen it. Yeah, well, I haven't seen it. Well, he was on again today, you know, doing about an hour, introducing his uh, Secretary of Defense, who uh, a lot of Democrats don't want. And the reason well, they don't... He hasn't been out of the military long enough. Supposedly, there's kind of a, either an unspoken rule or there is a rule. In fact, there is a rule that you have to be out of the military for seven years before you can be Secretary of Defense. However, it can be waived if the Senate or the Congress decides to waive it. I don't know which. Yeah, and, but it hardly ever has been done until Trump did it with, uh, what's his face? Mad Dog Mattis. Yeah, Mattis. Yeah, mm -hmm. who wasn't really a mad dog and kind of an okay guy. You know, I know, I, I kind of liked him, actually. Well, I mean, Trump got rid of him. How, how bad mm -hmm. could he be? Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, 
Uh, but uh, they, they, so they feel that way about this guy. I don't know. How do you feel about a, a Secretary of Defense being ex-military? Who knows the military better? Yeah. You know? I mean, if you have some experience, right? Well, why, why wouldn't they want a person? I mean, let's say a person becomes Secretary of Defense and he's seven years clean and sober as we could put it here <laughs> you know he hasn't he hasn't served in the military for seven years how does that change anything he's still got that that you know that mentality you know that yeah, he's, he's considered a civilian then and yeah. it's supposed to be a civilian controlled you know thing the civilian civilians control the uh, military yeah. instead of you know they don't want to have like a military czar kind of guy you know like, uh, this guy didn't seem that bad, you know. No, I mean, I think most of his appointments seem like pretty good idea, you know. Yeah. Uh, Just I, before Washington became president. But he's all he's got all these groups on his back. Like, uh, we got to have more blacks in there. We got to have more Hispanics in there. We have to have more women in there. Blah blah blah. And my answer is just find the best people for the job. And I'm sure there are some of those best people are black and women and Hispanics and so on. But don't set an agenda for how you're going to comport it, because to me, that's racist. You know, that's saying yeah. I, I distinguish between a black person. Uh, this should, we should not have a color. We should be colorblind when it comes to any of this. Uh, you know, you hired the best person, he just happened to be black. So, you know, but it didn't impede you that he was black from giving him the job. So, I don't know. How do you feel, Charlie? Tell me I'm full of shit. <laughs> now, the problem is that, you know, people want to hire people they know if they aren't familiar with people of other uh, ethnicities or religious background mm -hmm. then they're not going to hire people of those so you have a bias against those people whether you realize it or not so you you think you have to make a concerted effort in order to yeah. bypass those prejudices yep that's how i feel that's funny because i you know i never I, I i don't know i just think i would love this to live in a world where we're colorblind completely huh. yeah yes jeff many many places when when women couldn't really get the job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So were women. Yeah. And that attitude. I, I think there was a time where you had to make sure that you hired a black person or a woman or whatever because we hadn't balanced it out enough. And the opportunities had to be given to people so they could live up to them. Uh, you know, there was a time where if you said, oh, well, we want to get a black secretary of defense, and you go, well, there's nobody out there who's ready for it because we haven't given blacks the opportunity you know yeah. and that's why the time when we had to go overboard i think now we should just be colorblind in everything that we do but i don't think as a country we know how to do that you know we're just not that uh, that terrific anyway hey listen we've run out of time here i hear the theme playing you know how come i know the theme is playing because i made it play <laughs> <laughs> uh charlie wallace will be appearing next on the Jack Bishop program, which follows us right here uh, next. Jeff, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Alex, thank you for joining us. Oh, it's very nice. I think I got to uh, Trucker Steve and Sidekick Rocky, but we didn't see Sidekick Rocky tonight. Uh, he's upstairs sleeping Just again. Just like we haven't seen Adrian tonight, Brian. Uh up there sleeping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. I really appreciate it. And Rocky and Adrian. And of course, uh, John Larkin, you're terrific too. Everybody give a big wave goodbye and I'll give a big wave goodbye back. Okay. There they go. That's our citizen panel. And uh, that's it for me for tonight. We'll be back here again uh, tomorrow night at 1030, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, Huh. That's what we say in New York. Huh. If you see her, huh, tell her I love her. And by the way, be safe out there. Wear a mask. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>